I was trying to start up the video and my amiibo fell. It, it wasn't Shulk, so I'll pick it up later, but that, that kind of scared me. So on Tuesday, June 13th, it was Nintendo's E3 presentation for this year. Overall, in my opinion, E3 this year hasn't been too great. It's been very hit or miss. I haven't watched most of the conferences, but from the games I've heard, it's been... Uh, I haven't been interested much. However, Nintendo not only won E3, in my opinion, of course, but they announced two new Metroid games showed a godlike Mario Odyssey trailer, and gave us the Lord and Savior Xenoblade Chronicles 2 a new trailer. Yes! And the one of the best part, the best part about this whole thing, this was the first thing they showed. They started it off with an eSports segment, but right after that, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 got a new trailer, and I was so happy. I feel bad for anyone that followed my Twitter at that point because I was live tweeting the whole Nintendo E3 uh, presentation and I was so hyped and then I saw people slandering Xenoblade 2 on my timeline. Note, it was only people that haven't played the first game that were slandering Xenoblade 2 on my timeline. Do you want to fight? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh god, let's not go into sarcasm territory because that's very hit or miss. But, yeah, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 got a new trailer at this year's E3 for Nintendo, and I was so ecstatic when I saw this. I did not capture my live reaction, but my initial reaction went something like this. Reggie was standing in a grassy field, and I was like, Reggie, why are you standing on the box art for Xenoblade Chronicles? And then it transitioned to Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I was like, ooh! I think I might have actually screamed something along the lines of the logo! <laughs> Cause Monolith Soft's logo came up on the clouds and I was like, I'm ready. I'm ready for this trailer. Give it to me, baby. And that trailer was so good. Besides some things. Alright, and we're gonna get into that. But I'm gonna be talking to you in this video about my thoughts on this trailer, doing some minor analysis stuff, and just talking about some controversy surrounding this game because the game's not coming out for like another six months and there's already controversy so this should be good all right so like the last video from january uh this is not scripted this is just me going off of notes that i wrote ahead of the video and uh yeah first off i think i'm gonna talk about how in the first video in january for xenoblade 2 for the trailer that they showed at the switch presentation I said that it looks like a hybrid of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 aesthetic with Xenoblade Wii aesthetic, and I said that works really well, and I still stand behind that, but what I'm getting at here is that it, I believe it was confirmed in a Treehouse livestream that this game is using Xenoblade Chronicles X's engine, and that makes a lot of sense, so maybe we'll get to actually run fast? <laughs> That, that's my main hope. I, I joked on Twitter and said, are we going to get a giant robot? But at this point, to be completely honest, I would just like to run faster than Shulk and the others in Xenoblade Wii could walk. <laughs> I mean, in Xenoblade Wii, they ran, but they ran so slowly. It was like a jog. Shulk was like, come on, Ryan. We got to go. Beat the Mechoon. And Ryan was like, all right, all right. But I just ate a sandwich, Shulk. Ah, all right, take your time. That was what it was like, to be completely honest, in Xenoblade Wii. They ran like that, but in Xenoblade X, you could zoom across the... Oh god, I forgot what the locations in Xenoblade X were. No, it's only been four months! Um, uh, Primordia! You can zoom across Pi Primordia in that game. You can go like, come on, Alma, we didn't even eat breakfast, let's zoom it! Oh, I want that in this game, but hey, if that's not there, I won't complain. I'm cool with a more slow-paced walking speed if it means taking in the sights and such. Um, but, yeah. That's, um, something I hope that they put in this game with the Xenoblade X engine being implemented. Uh, that's all I want to talk about on that, really. What do you think of this game being on the Xenoblade Chronicles X engine? Let me know your thoughts on that and anything else I discussed in this video below. Now let's talk about something that, uh, is kind of controversial. Oh, let's get to this, alright. The art style. Now, if you don't remember way back when the game was first revealed, people were like all up in arms, like no one can decide 
if they like this art style more or less. Well, it's not that that's an issue. It's an issue that a lot of people just straight up do not like this art style. And I still like this art style. The character designs are another thing entirely, but I don't think the aesthetic that these characters are like riding off of look bad. I don't think the characters themselves like look awful. And I don't think the art style itself is something that looks bad um, by any means. It's just different. And a lot of the complaints that I've heard have still been, it's anime. And like the video I did in January should tell you, Xenoblade has always been anime. Do I have to stick Xenoblade Wii in your face and tell you this, this is a shonen. This, this is a shonen anime. Do I have to do that again? I, I hope I don't because Xenoblade's always been anime. And I find it kind of hypocritical, to be completely honest, that people are saying that they might be jumping ship from the series entirely just because they don't like how the characters look, how they look, quote unquote, anime. It's another thing to call these designs generic anime, though, because then your complaints start to make a little bit more sense. That's what I've been seeing lately. Um, the argument that the characters in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 look like every anime ever, quote unquote, of course. I don't think they look like every anime ever, in fact, I think these characters look cool in their own right, you know? I just feel like, since we have Xenoblade Chronicles to compare them to, they look kinda generic. I mean, heck, if we want to go back, the characters in Xenogears, from what I've played, look like generic anime, but they still look cool. I mean, hey, I like those characters a lot so far. Again, I'm not very far in Xenogear since I haven't LP'd it in like a, a few months, but I think those characters look really cool. But I do agree, the characters do look kind of generic, but I think everyone's like getting up in arms about how they look. And I did post a tweet that kind of was controversial. People were like, Sammy, what do you mean? It's because it's anime. And then I was like pulling my hair out. I'm like, it's always been anime. Why is this the argument? But I posted a tweet and it said that all I did was say, how did we go from this to this? And I showed a picture of Shulk next to Rex, what is supposed to be this game's protagonist name. And I wasn't trying to spark a debate or anything. I was just trying to say that they look so different, right? Like, Shulk, you have this big, strong, almost adult dude, I think Shulk's 18, this adult dude going on an adventure to get revenge for his colony, and then he got Rex. What's Rex's motives? Uh, anime girl sword. But I'm not saying Rex is bad. Well, we'll get to that. I'm just trying to say that it looks very different, and I'm not sure how to feel about it comparative-wise. On its own, I like these character designs quite a bit. I think they look very neat, and I think they're gonna grow on us a lot. I hope they do. Other than that, the characters that didn't have the limelight in the trailer, I think they looked really good. There was this character in the trailer that uh, they were fighting, that Rex was fighting, and he had like a top hat, and I liked the look of him. I really liked the look of him, and some of these characters look like Xenoblade X characters. Like, I swear, Yelv in a mask was in the trailer a few times, so I guess Yelv is gonna be this game's villain. Oh, <laughs> can't wait for that. But yeah, I don't think the art's gonna be a problem in the end. Besides the characters, I think the world looks gorgeous, and I don't think anyone's gonna argue with me on that. The world still looks gorgeous in this game, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. I have this list in front of me that I need to go by, and now that we're done with art, let's talk about the literal five seconds of gameplay they showed in this trailer. Well, I can't say five seconds. I mean, the battle gameplay. There we go. The battle gameplay. Now... When I first saw this in the trailer, I was like, is this going to be turn-based? Because they weren't moving at all during combat in the five seconds they showed it in the trailer. They were standing perfectly in place doing moves on what looked like a turn-based move selector. I am happy to say, they did a Treehouse livestream a little bit later after this spotlight presentation was over, and this game is not going to be turn-based. However, it's going to be very different, and I'm going to tell you how. I actually got some footage from the Treehouse livestream, so if you would like me to do a gameplay discussion video on my thoughts on the new gameplay, please let me know because I do have some things to say. And it's mostly positive. I like how this gameplay is turning out, but I'll say a few things right now. You no longer are allowed to move and auto-attack. 
you only auto attack when standing still, and I feel like this is gonna mess me up a lot, because if you've seen my Let's Plays on Xenoblade and Xenoblade X, you know that I move around very frequently when I play these games. Whether it's for style or it's for getting away from dudes while still attacking, I move around a lot in these games, and that's gonna mess me up hardcore. I guess they're going for a more slow-paced game here, and it looks like you're only going to be limited to three or four arts per weapon, I think. I wasn't paying too much attention to the dialogue, they were- not the dialogue, what? The people on the live stream that were talking, I wasn't paying too much attention to them talking, but it looks like you're going to be able to switch weapons mid-battle? I don't understand. Basically, getting a little bit ahead of myself here. This girl, Pyra, as she is known by in the trailer, she's your weapon! Yeah, after I uploaded my video, people started theorizing that this girl was gonna be the sword, and I was like, I mean, it kinda makes sense, they kinda look similar, and... I mean, how would that work, though? And then I was like, oh, wait... Xenoblade Wii had a similar thing that I can't talk about because spoilers for that game. But yeah... Uh, Pyra is your sword, and you can switch swords mid-battle, so Pyra's not going to be like a party member, I believe. I believe they said she's not going to be playable in somewhere, I swear I heard that. But I don't think Pyra's going to be playable, but you can like switch dudes mid-battle to be your sword. It looks nuts, and I'm very excited to see how that plays out. I I'm very excited for this gameplay in general. It seems very new, very fresh. The most unique gameplay we've seen since, heck, Xenoblade Chronicles Wii from, like, Xenosaga. I think Xenosaga was turn-based, I haven't played it. But still, I'm very excited to see how this gameplay goes. But segueing into that, into the story of this game, in the first trailer, um, I believe it was Rex or someone said they needed to go to some place called Elysium. And I'm pretty sure that in this trailer it's all been confirmed, it's all but been confirmed that Elysium is that tree from the end of the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 trailer from the Switch presentation. Yeah, they were talking about it in the trailer, and they were talking about some paradise, the world tree that they call Elysium. Unless I completely misunderstood it, I'm like 90% sure this world tree is Elysium. If it's not, then I don't know what it could be. I feel like I completely misunderstood it, and I might have, but the world tree is probably Elysium. That's probably what this is. And Pyra needs Rex to take her there for some reason. And judging by how the trailer goes, Pyra is probably really important because everyone seems like they're trying to get her. Or at least that's what the bad guys' dialogue are making them seem like they're trying to do. You know, assuming they're the bad guys, we really don't know much about the characters in this game yet. We really only know much about Rex and Pyra, Rex being our main protagonist here, and Pyra being our sword. And I swear to god, after this trailer was released, every single artist on Twitter started drawing lewd art of Pyra, none of which I will show in this video because I don't want to get my channel taken down, but GUYS! I appreciate fine art of characters from games and anime I like, but when you overly sexualize a sword, I, I draw the line! <laughs> Granted, it was Monolith's fault. No, 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 no. It, it was not their fault. But they made a sword in Anime Girl. And... Yeah. <laughs> Please don't overly sexualize the sword. I, I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> On one hand, I think she is a genuinely attractive character in this world. On the other hand, she's a sword. That's all there is to it. She's a sword. <laughs> anyway... They gotta get to Elysium, and I guess they're gonna have dudes help them along the way, because it's looking like from the end of the trailer and this picture Nintendo posted on their Twitter, we've got another party this time around, all of which who probably have their own backstory and reasons for following our protagonists. But yeah, I really like the looks of the party this time, but we'll get to that later. I have this list I need to follow, and we'll get to the party and characters themselves later. I'm not too big on speculating stories, so I'll wrap that up quick. I'm not sure, like, how this story's gonna play out. I'm just hoping it's a good story, 
unlike Xenoblade Chronicles X's lackluster story. I'm not trying to say Xenoblade X's story was bad, it was just very lackluster, like nothing happened in it. There were twists and turns, but nothing like Xenoblade Wii Huge. There were no Prison Island type moments here. There were no Makana's Core moments here, you know? You know what I mean? Xenoblade X had a good story, but it was nothing groundbreaking. I did enjoy Xenoblade X a lot, though, and I do hope it gets a sequel still. Anyway, let's talk about the world this game is going to take place in. And in the Treehouse livestream, either I was hearing things or they were talking about how there's going to be, like, a bunch of titans in this game to climb on. You know, like Xenoblade Wii had the Bionis and the Mechonis, but... This is gonna have a bunch of different titans? I don't know what I heard in the in that live stream, but Xenoblade 2 might have a lot of titans to climb on, and they might have all have different environments. I don't know how this is gonna play out at all, honestly. I wasn't paying too good attention though, so don't take my word for it. But let's talk about that world. If I could get the trailer up really quick so I could like talk about they quickly showed some gameplay. Um, of Rex just going across these worlds in this trailer. So they show three brief segments of Rex just walking, and from this walking we can get a good indication of this world, in my opinion. So what do we got here? We've got this foresty-like place that's remnant of places like Gower Plain and Primordia. Kind of looking like the place we saw in the first trailer, but not really. We can tell from the top right of the screen, this place is called Drillbore Bridge, unless that's just the area of the area that he's in. Whoa. Maybe Drillbore Bridge is the landmark, because I don't think this whole place would be called uh, Drillbore Bridge. That doesn't seem like it'd be called that. But um, this area looks interesting. Very grassy, very vibrant. It's not- it's morning? I didn't notice that until right now. It's morning in this- in this uh, area. Huh. But yeah, it looks very grassy. Then right after that, we get this view of a uh, more mechanist looking industrial type place. Well, you can't really tell that, but this uh, stony bridge, metal bridge, in front of the sunset. Galad Residential Zone. I almost read that as Galahad Fortress. Uh, <laughs> I almost read this as Galahad Fortress. Whoops. Galad Residential Zone. So this could be a place where people live. This could be where we live. Um... It's very hard to tell where this place is in this part of the trailer. Then after that, we have this black mountain looking area, Zalmor's Crevice, where there appears to be this ruin type area among these snow mountains, kind of like in Xenoblade Chronicles Wii, where there were the ruins. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> yeah, there were ruins on Black Mountain. These look. This is kind of like that, except way more architecty, if that's a word, which it isn't. <laughs> Architectural. That's a term, right? Yeah. Yeah, architect type thing. It looks like someone built it, is what I'm trying to say, among these mountains. So that's interesting. I wonder what the story behind that is. Uh, Zalmor's Crevice, like I said. And that was all. Then after, right after that, actually, we got this uh, big view of what could be one of the titans that was mentioned. This area was in the first trailer, but we saw Rex walking alongside it. Um... It's the thing with the big moving head that's also, like, a mountain next to this village. I think this looks really cool, and I'm really excited to see um, how this goes. Like, how this plays and everything. He didn't actually walk, and I just wanted to bring attention to it. But throughout this whole trailer, there's these huge moments with giant monsters happening, and dudes with swords everywhere. I'm really excited to see how all of this happens. Holy floof. This game just looks amazing from this trailer. The world looks like it's going to be great, full of life and characters and personality. And you know what? New art style and all, I'm welcome to it. I'm welcome to this brand new world, wherever it may be. Oh, uh, but can we talk about the music, dudes? Holy floof! Okay, okay. So, you may have heard the music in the trailer this engage the enemy like composition that played for most of it godlike but monolith went a step further and released four of the songs on the xenoblade 2 website and i downloaded all of them so that's probably what you've been hearing for most of the video unless i ran out of music but 
Man! Oh, it sounds good. Let me just play some clips for you right here, just, just for the heck of it. sounds so good. My favorite is probably the third song, the Engage the Enemy like song. On Monolith's website, these songs had names, but they were all in Japanese, so I only know them as BGM 1, 2, 3, and 4. So BGM 3 is my favorite of the bunch that we heard, but BGM 2 is also sounding really good. I think I heard from somewhere that BGM 2 might be like the in-game battle theme, and I don't know how to feel about that because it sounds really freaking epic. But as a main battle theme, I feel like it's gonna get repetitive really quickly. Just the do 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 It's so heavy metal and I don't think it fits this game's more lighthearted cutie art style. Cutie? I don't mean cutie. This game ain't cutie. You see this dude Rex? He's not cutie. Q laugh track. Anyway. Um, yeah. Let's talk about, uh, speaking of the characters, yeah, good segue. Let's talk about the party in this game, because I'm very confused on who the party of this game is going to be. Now, we saw, at the end of the trailer, we saw a, a, a panel of what seemed like this game's party. But from the gameplay that they showed on the Treehouse livestream, this game's party is going to be very, very interesting because everyone is a sword okay okay let me rephrase that every other person you see here is a sword they're the weapon pyra is rex's weapon so i'm pretty sure she doesn't fight and i don't know how that's gonna work is she gonna have a personality is she literally just gonna be a weapon this girl on the right here i think her name's nia the cat girl she has tron light discs as her weapon and her tiger is her weapon like, her, her tiger is what is giving her the power to use those. It's really hard to explain, but in the Treehouse livestream, they showed that you can switch weapons, and Rex was switching from Pyra to generic dudes that corresponded to other weapons. I think one was a gun, one was an axe, and they didn't have, like, personalities or, like, creative designs. They were just generic, but they corresponded as his swords. I mean, not swords, uh, his weapons. And I'm going to assume that that tiger thing is Nia's weapon, and that character on the far left is this, uh, Nopon's weapon. Did I mention Nopon's are finally playable again? I'm so excited for this, I missed them. Tatsu was bad, Ricky's the GOAT! Oh, I missed- I missed Ricky, we got a new Ricky. I hope he's a good character! Um, but yeah. There was another picture Nintendo released on their Twitter that did not show the same characters. It showed Rex, Pyra, Nia, and her tiger, but it also showed this dude with this big, beefy, edgy sword, and what I presume is his weapon partner. I don't know why these two aren't in the party uh, picture at the end, but uh, maybe there's something more that meets the eye with these two, you know? Oh, can't wait to see what that's all about. But yeah, um, I'm excited to see what our party is like in this game. I hope that they're good. They look like really interesting characters. I think uh, my favorite design is probably either Pyra or uh, Nia. I really like Nia's outfit. This new Nopon looks really cool too. He looks like he's got Tatsu's glasses. So that's a bit worrying. Uh, <laughs> his weapon partner looks pretty cool. Also, something interesting. Nia can actually ride her tiger. Do you remember the first trailer for Xenoblade 2? where that character was riding a tiger. Yeah, that was Nia on her tiger. 
Originally, that gave me the impression that you were going to be able to create your own character because Rex looked so generic. But that is not the case. Rex is our main character. And Nia is another character that you can presumably play as, like Xenoblade Chronicles Wii. Now let's talk about the final thing I wanted to talk about with this trailer. This trailer was great. It was so good. Everything about it was great, except maybe uh, one or two things. But there's one thing everyone's talking about. And that thing is Rex. Our main character for this game... Rex, last name here, is our main character. <laughs> Remember in the, the first video when I said that I thought we might be able to create our own custom character? Yeah, it's because Rex looks so generic. Now, I know I'm contradicting myself here because earlier I said I like his design, and I still do. But that doesn't mean Rex doesn't look generic. He really does. Like, okay, okay. Let's compare Shulk and Rex one more time. Alright, you see Shulk? Easily identifiable. You know, Xenoblade isn't the most well-known game, but Smash Bros. is out, and Shulk got some more recognition, alright? You go up to a random person, and they at least have some knowledge of games, they've played Smash Bros., they could probably at least recognize Shulk. Maybe not know his name, but they can know him. Because Shulk has a very unique design. Sh Shulk always stuck out to me, alright? Shulk is one of my favorite characters in any game, and he's always stuck out to me as a great video game character design. He's got his hair down, showing that he really doesn't care how it's cut. He doesn't care. He just cares about his studies and science, basically. The studies of the Monado. <clears throat> got his trusty red sweater, always keeping warm. Got his big old shoes. Actually, I forget how big his shoes are. You know, he's got a book in one of his illustrations showing that he's all about that knowledge. And you know, he's... Always, he tends to stand upright, or in an upright position, to show that he's always ready to fight. This dude, Rex, he doesn't really show me that, to be honest. He just looks like a young, optimistic kid. And that's not bad, alright? People complain about kid characters in games, and I can understand that. I, did, I don't find too many kid characters in games boring, though. I mean, not boring, annoying. I don't find too many kid characters annoying, and... Rex hopefully won't be annoying. Hopefully. I'm very worried though, because Shulk was just iconic. He was this iconic character, and Alma from Xenoblade X. She was essentially the main character, and while I don't think she's as cool or as iconic as Shulk, I like Alma a lot. She definitely had a lot going on for her. She had her own personality of sorts, even though she wasn't the typical happy-go-lucky protagonist. I mean, Shulk isn't happy-go-lucky either, but he has a personality. Alma does too, and Rex seems like he will, but... I'm not digging him so far, to be honest with you. Like... Just... We'll show you. We'll show you what me and Pyra are made of. Take... Yeah. What, as soon as I rewatched the trailer and I heard him say that, I was like, hey, it's Titus. <laughs> um, he seems to be the only character with a British accent in this whole trailer, as far as I remember. And I thought at first this whole game was going to be British again, and I was excited. Then it's like, oh, we got other voice actors, and they're not bad. I like them a lot. I think Rex's voice is the only voice I, like, actually dislike, to be honest with you. But yeah... I did read in a reply to um, Nintendo of America's tweet about Xenoblade 2 that they did they might have used placeholder lines for this trailer since they wanted to get it out for E3, but I can't confirm that since it was just a reply to a tweet. So hopefully that's actually true and that was just placeholder lines because if I hear Rex saying, TAKE THIS in the game like that, I'm going to laugh so hard even if it's a serious moment. <laughs> I swear, every time I hear him say that, I cringe a little bit, and I hate using the word cringe. And I, like, laugh a little bit, because it's just so funny to me. His lines sound so forced in this trailer, and that bothers me. That's what really bothers me. I think his actor makes him sound less like a cool protagonist and more like a he-just-wants-a-paycheck type thing. And I'm hoping that changes, because I feel like this voice could be good if he actually, like worked harder. I'm not trying to like force him or anything, I'm just trying to say that I like 
Rex's voice, but I don't like the way he delivers lines, if that makes any sense. Because some of the lines in this trailer were actually really good with Rex. I think there was one where he was like, I'll take you there, and it sounded... it sounded good. It's just these couple lines where he says, I'll show you what me and Poirot are made of, and take this, that just sound so forced. Oh yeah, also this one where he says, Poirot! Yeah, that also sounded pretty forced. <laughs> Not gonna lie. So I'm just hoping that Rex um, sounds and seems like a better protagonist when the game actually comes out, because it's kind of unfair to judge him during the marketing phase of this game, or so I thought at first, but <laughs> I looked at the Xenoblade Chronicles Wii trailer, and Shulk always sounded good, dude. Like, holy floof. You go back to the trailers for Xenoblade Chronicles, you could hear the emotion in Adam Houghton's performance as Shulk. It's nuts. And then you go to Rex, it's just like, take this. To be honest, I I I'm not like a stickler for dual audio. I make jokes about it a lot, but if we get dual audio in this game, I wouldn't complain. I'd be okay with it. I probably wouldn't use it, but if the option was there, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't complain. And that'd be nice. That'd be good. That'd be great. I don't want this game to do bad, and I hope people like it, because I'm hoping it's going to be good. Anyway, though, that's pretty much all I had to say on the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 trailer from E3. Hope you all enjoyed this video. What do you think of uh, everything I mentioned in this video? Specifically, what do you think of the art style and Rex? And the music. What do you think of the music, too? Um, I want to know what you think of the art style. You think it's good? You think it's bad? You think it's just weird? Uh, what do you think of Rex as a main character? I am hoping he's good, but right now he's not looking so hot. And what do you think of this godlike music? It sounds so good. I recommend it so much. It's already up on so many YouTube channels, and I cannot recommend the soundtrack enough based on what's out. Anyway, though, hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a like if you did enjoy. Leave a comment on what you thought of all the stuff I mentioned. And subscribe for more Xenoblade Chronicles 2 content. I will be Let's Playing the game when it comes out, so look forward to that. And, uh, yeah. That'll be it for this video. Thank you all again for watching. I'm Sora Kingdom K3. Signing off. Peace out, my little keychains, and good night. I won't use that power, and I won't let you use it either. If you know what you desire, you will have to show it. Not with words, but with your own strength. Everyone, let's go.